everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today, well, I want to play with Dharma Olive Brown. I have only played with this color once so far. I opened it up and did a quick crude swatch as part of the September 2020 Chemnitz Dialogue livestream. And it's a beautiful color that sort of breaks green and brown, and I just want to play with it in a pan, speckle with it see what happens, see where it takes us. I still have some yarn that was pre-soaked from that dialogue. So let's just play and see where this color takes us. I want to take a moment to give a huge thank you and shout out to today's Dye Pot Weekly lab partner, Crystal. Crystal, thank you so much for supporting this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And I'm really excited to see how this all turns out. The swatch of the color from the Dharma poster of their acid dyes reads very, very sandy. But a lot of pastel colors, when you use the powder directly on yarn, they're much more pigmented. There aren't pastel pigments out there. They probably just have some fillers in there so that way you can do a 1% depth of shade or one gram of dye on 100 grams of yarn to get you know the intended type of color. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw up the swatches that I did for that live stream so you can see all of the colors all together, and then a little close-up of the olive brown. Uh, this quick close-up wasn't quite as brilliant as I felt the separation in, in person, but it's why I've just been really waiting to play with this color, and there's no time like the present. This is a four inch deep catering steam pan. I should have it linked in the description, video description below. I love it because it allows me to spread out the yarn a lot. And so even when we put 300 grams of yarn here into the pan, uh, it makes it possible to dye all of that with some ease. Now, we're not really going for low immersion. I want spread, I want breaking. We, were, we are gonna be speckling though. So I think what I'm going to do is add some more water from our pre-soak. So this is fairly good, like not super low immersion, low-ish immersion, but I am actually going to add even more water because I want the yarn to sort of just be in here, but I want it not to be super compressed. The less compressed the yarn is in your pan, the more the colors have a chance to spread out and sort of opening things up with my hands, but I haven't even added acid yet, so <laughs> I don't know why. And I'm gonna add one, two splashes of vinegar, this should be plenty for what I want. This is just a let's play with the color. A lot of times I measure the amount of vinegar and a lot of times it's not that important and doesn't actually matter as much as you might think. Yes, there are some techniques where you want the vinegar to be in a sweet spot so you can get some really cool breaking and since we're dealing with a dry powder, I'm not as worried about that right now, but we'll see. I might regret not measuring. <laughs> so I'm gonna heat this up and we'll come back once things are nice and steamy. Everything that I'm using is dedicated for dyeing yarn and it's not also used for food. I am more muffled because I'm wearing a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves because we're dealing with dry powder. And I just reduced the heat of the two burners on my stove to make it a little less steamy. I am gonna go straight in to the jar here, pinching up a little bit of dye, and for now, just sort of speckling it on. I will probably go heavier at some point, but I wanted to start like this and not touch it, because the one thing that my crude swatching doesn't show is the different colors of pigments that you have. It shows sort of like an average because I added it in there in a clump and then moved it around. But right now, we're able to see more exactly what is there. And I do not have a yarn mop handy currently 
Um, so I'm making my effort to get everything off into the yarn. Eventually, I will probably, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just rinse my fingers in a cup of water that I can have at the end. But this is cool. The colors I'm seeing are red, brown, and blue and yellow. I'm planning to save the color in water, but I decided to wipe my hands on a paper towel with this first batch just to see. And I can see the red and blue speckles in there and then this warm brown spreading out, which I thought was really interesting given the coolness of the swatch and the overall coolness we see in here. This is gorgeous. The brown I am seeing right now is cool toned in that it reminds me a bit of pecan brown. I definitely see some reddish hints. There are absolutely some red speckles in here. In fact, there is a big red swatch. And you can see in some areas where it layers how it starts to turn a little green. This is beautiful, 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 beautiful. And this goes to show how in addition to swatching, and I'll give an example of the kind of thing I do when I swatch usually. Take a little bit of dye, put it on the yarn, and then come in with a spoon and smooth that around. Okay, and right now I'm just moving it more, and look how yellowish that looks. Maybe until the heat is applied. That is just cool. But that kind of thing that I do gives a slightly different result to doing small speckles on the yarn. But we're gonna go in heavier and just layer this color more and more. We now have a sense of what it'll do. And I'm really excited to see whoop, how this yarn will come out and all of that jazz. So it's really fun to just speckle. And then actually with my fingers, I'm just coming in <laughs> using that color. And then I'm also coming in to shift this. It's got a moment to let some of that color start to set. And then we will see what starts to spread from it. But look at all of these gorgeous hues in here. I'm gonna wanna add more up there. But this is so beautiful and feels very fall. And oh, I love it. I love this color. The one thing that is critically important is that each time my hands go into the jar, they are completely, and I mean completely dry. We do not want to introduce liquid into the jar. But even if you look here in the jar, you can see that the powder has different colored flecks in it, which is just super, super cool. All right, let's come in, use up what is on my fingers, use the spoon to help distribute it. I will be flipping really soon. I don't think I'm gonna give this a ton of time to set. But I love that we've got this like blue, brown, and purple. And then there is some yellow. Some of that yellow on that I had seen on the gloves. And I think it might not be showing up. There you go, you can kind of see it. There's definitely some yellow left in here. So, hmm. Now I think I'm gonna flip now-ish. Okay, let's flip and see. Um, so there's a lot of brown. We see, or like that yellowish color. We see some like purples and stuff sort of coming through the bottom. This is so funny because it did not, I did not expect it to feel so purple. Um, I think that once those yellows strike, it'll make it feel more brown. I, I really thought we were gonna get something like very, brown and green, which it may still end up looking that way. But, you know, some things and some colors 
do vary a bit depending on the technique and two people can get very different results. Uh, and these results are very different from what I saw in that first time. And so now I'm just gonna keep on speckling and flipping and speckling and moving the colors through until I am happy with the coverage. So let's go into a time lapse. There is definitely a brown color that sort of waits to the end. This I even see sort of sticking to my gloves a little bit as I rinse the dye off into the pan. Uh, the purple and blue and more chestnut red colors seems to strike first and this yellow reminds me a lot of the yellow at the end of avocado uh, where you see the teal and that color is like what and then at the end then the yellows come in and you get that more brown but this to me almost looks like i mixed navy a little bit of deep purple and then i don't know some browns it is unexpected and beautiful and I mean, it really looks like I layered on a bunch of different colors and I am really, really, really excited. The more color I added, the more of the brown sort of came up. You can see the yellow in there from when I flip. And I think it's this yellow that brings these blues and purples and reds and makes them more of a brown. So I continue to flip, add color, flip, add color, flip, add color, until finally I was satisfied. I did take a couple breaks in between flipping to just try to give some time to let those browns start to absorb. I'm a little nervous that it might take a little time, but we'll see. Good news, the brown, this yellow towards the end does seem to be absorbing with time. So I'm just gonna let things sit for about 10 more minutes. You probably noticed that I flipped so many times uh, just because, you know, I kept finding pockets where I wanted more color. And again, I wonder how dyers dye four skeins in one of these pans and don't need to flip around as much. Maybe just the techniques and stuff are just so different or maybe, you know, they're better. And I've tried this a couple times, but about like having the yarn really spread out and maybe keeping part of it super scrunched at the end. So then you truly get more coverage versus having everything scrunched all the way through. I honestly don't know, but I am really happy with this colorway. It's very like moody and fun. I mean, there's definitely a brown cast to it, but I see those blues and purples and I'm really curious what it'll look like dry. So I'm gonna heat this for about 10 more minutes. Then I'm gonna turn off the heat, let everything cool off in the pan for a while. And then uh, once it's cool, we will go and wash it. Now it's looking quite brown and green to me as we're about to wash. Um, and I would say it definitely feels like an olivey kind of colorway. You know those green olives with the like brown spots on them? feels very much like that. Um, I'm not sure if it's because the yellowish green finally like dissolved, whoops, and went everywhere, or if, you know, if I had dyed it and then removed it, maybe we would have still seen that like purple and green kind of color, but it's beautiful. So a little bit of yellow runoff, not horrible, but I'm gonna now add a little bit of some clear dish soap and we'll fill this up. All right, and let's see. Oh, that's not much of anything. All right, I'm gonna rinse out the soap, put all of this yarn through my Nina Stuff spin dryer and then hang it up to dry. Once I rinse out all the soap, of course. I think olive brown is living up to its name. There are warm brown tones in here with this very olive green backdrop. 
when we were dyeing with this yarn, we saw a lot of blue and red speckles with this yellow that took a lot longer to absorb. So I think you could use this color and get something very like blue and red with just like a hint of a beige undertone. But if you leave it in and as those yellows absorb, those red, those purpley reds turn a lot more brown. And this really does look like an olive to me with, you know, sometimes olives can have some little speckles on it. It just is spot on. <laughs> Like food coloring, there is, are limited pigments that are used to make pre-mixed colors. And so some that are primary are made of only one molecule and then others have various mixtures to get the color that you want. The big difference is that I am not familiar with what these pigments are. That isn't something that I know a lot about. and. Therefore, I don't know which pigments are in which colors, so I can't sort of break it down on that level. But it's just a lot of fun to play with them, and I love to explore. And this all-over technique where we, I mean, we speckled all over with one dye color, and there's so much variation in here. This colorway is delicious. So if this is something that you would like to see more, especially with other colors we know break, uh, please let me know what colors I should try this with down below in the comments. There are still blue and reddish notes in here. They have not completely disappeared, but that yellow definitely toned a lot of it so we see more of the green and the brown in here. How would I classify this color? I don't know, olive brown seems great because it's a green, it's like an olive green, but it's also a brown. Um, overall, it has more greenish vibes uh, compared to some other browns that I have played with. And I am absolutely, absolutely curious to dip dye this to see how that breaks and just what happens there. I think that that will be incredible to see. Crystal, thank you so much for being today's lab partner. I really hope you love the way that the olive brown yarn turned out. I know that I was super surprised with how this all went, and I hope that you're really excited to turn this into something wonderful. So again, thank you so much, Crystal. If you at home would like to learn how you can become a lab partner, there's a few ways to do it. Head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop and you can find more details in the listings. If there are not any slots currently available, feel free to send me a message on Etsy and I can put you on a waiting list to notify once I release more slots. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, please make sure you're subscribed and press that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. I always release videos on Tuesday and Friday mornings, but in addition, there's bonus live streams and special series along the way, and you don't wanna miss any of it. If you're already a huge fan of the content and wanna help support it on another level, I do have a Patreon. You can find links to that in the video description. I also have an Etsy shop where most of the yarn that I dye in these videos ends up Cabinet's Creations. I'm still amazed that this was all done just with one dye. I, oh, this is not the color I was really expecting. From that swatch, I thought it was gonna be sort of brown speckles with sort of this olivey green expansion. And I suppose it's a little bit like that, but it's still so different. <laughs> it's still so different. So it's just not quite what I expected. I wasn't expecting to see that red and blue. I was expecting to see brown with the speckles when we started. So it's just fun to play with color. And this is a big reason why it's good to just play with your, with your dyes. Um, you don't need to do it on full skeins. You can do it on mini skeins, even just a couple grams, just to see what happens and get a feel. Because understanding how the different dyes perform makes it easier to use them in many different ways as you go forward. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.